Herman Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries, and uh, I'm coming to do this uh, Saturday morning and want to just um, look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And um, I've been thinking here uh, lately a little bit about what's going on in the world and maybe even prophetic times happening around us, um, certainly times of great spiritual change, both good and bad in America here, and um, all kinds of things that were happening. And um, I was having several counseling sessions with children and different people throughout the week here and thinking about my own life. And I realized that, um, you know, regardless of what's going on around us, it, there, the answer to what's going on around us, according to Peter here, is our relationship with the Lord and growing in our relationship with Him. And it's really interesting that I was reading through that whole chapter there, and the entire chapter talks about, like the, the verses there talk about you know, trials and uh, the, the book of Second Peter trials and talking about the end of the age and God creating a new heaven and a new earth and you know, there's major stuff that is happening. But Peter then goes along and and his response to all that was grow in Christ. Uh, so whatever was happening on the outside, his response to it was personal growth on the inside. How fascinating! So no matter how bad things were getting on the outside, Peter's response was personal growth on the inside. And um, I thought about that and thought that anybody who goes and comes for counseling or any problem that I've ever had in my life, the reality is, is that that is always the solution. That most of the time you can go get counseling, but the counseling doesn't change. Counseling doesn't change um, our circumstances because most of the time our circumstances are tied up in what other people do or say or how they're acting or life circumstances that we can't necessarily change. Now, I'm not saying we can't change some things that are going on in our life. Obviously, we can. But even if that's the case where it's something we can change in our life that is going to make our situation better, notice that it's about personal growth. And by the way, it doesn't matter if we're talking about somebody who is a Christian who believes in um, Christ and and um, and the kingdom of God, or we're talking about somebody who's not a Christian, Christian or not non-Christian, doesn't really matter. The answer to fixing the problems in our life almost always comes from the idea of a personal growth standpoint, that I am growing and changing how that I look at situations, that I am becoming emotionally mature and able to handle the stresses of situations and deal with them from a proper way in a in, in a way that um, is, is most beneficial to me and others around me. And from a Christian's perspective, it is growing in our relationship with God so that regardless of what's happening around us, we are at peace because we know that he's taking care of everything that's happening and taking place. So in the chaos of the last 10 years in the world and here in America for the Christian, we have to remember that our first and foremost responsibility is still and is always going to be our personal growth with the Lord, that we must force ourselves to not spend all of our time thinking about what other things are happening around us, no matter how horrendous they get, and spend time growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that phrase there, I thought it was interesting. So there's two areas here where it talks about growth in that verse. Number one is in grace. And grace is comes, the Bible says, because we all humble ourselves. So as I go before God in prayer, humble myself, give myself, tell him what I cannot do, what I cannot accomplish, um, admit my weakness, um, admit my frailties, admit my sin, then I have grace. And grace is the ability to be able to do what God wants me to do, but I got that through surrender, repentance, and turning myself totally and completely over to Him because not relying on myself. And then knowledge is that people today, even Christians, the kids that we um, work with in our ministry, 
um, in counseling uh, people, even Christians, do not understand who God is. They simply do not know God's word, and we do not know God's word, and we do not know who Christ is, and we have our own opinions of who he is, and because of that, we, we cannot grow. So the idea of growth here uh, has two aspects to it. The idea of grace that's give, that comes from God to us as we humble ourselves and, and have him do a work in our life. And then also the idea of knowledge, which is something we can deal with in that we become to the place where we humbly try to know uh, God, uh, the Father and Christ and the Holy Spirit through the study of his word and the meditation on his word and the humbling ourselves of not looking at our own ideas about who he is, but reading his word, meditating on it, and um, and uh, uh, growing in our understanding of, of who he is through the knowledge of his word. And I know that's a very supernatural thing, but, but it does happen when we humble ourselves before God and he shows us who he is. So... Most people don't go down that path of growth. They still have their outside circumstantial problems. They're unwilling to grow because anytime growth happens, there are growing pains. And the growing pains are, I have never had any growth in my Christian life ever, ever, ever. Growth in my professional life, growth in my marriage, growth in my dealing with my kids, growth in my relationship with other people, growth in my relationship with Christ. I've never had any growth in my life that was not painful. It usually has some element of change, and therefore people don't want to do it. So therefore, they look to the outside circumstance, and in a sense, we play the victim stance to say that the reason that we're suffering is because of the outside circumstances that are happening around us. And the truth of the matter is, yes, the outside circumstances are affecting us, but the truth is, is that we don't have the strength to be able to change them, deal with them, um, and... Uh, and 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 get the best benefit out of those circumstances because we are not growing because we're unwilling to go through the growing pains that are necessary to grow in Christ. And quite frankly, that's why we, I'll put myself in this category, that's why we as the church in America is so weak, is because we're unwilling to go through that hard process. Something that I think earlier Christians, Christians in the early 1900s, Christians in the 1800s in the um, world, but definitely I think in the English-speaking church of, of Britain and America, understood as just a requirement of the Christian faith. They did not look at it like it was some odd, bizarre thing that you would go through trials and heartaches. They looked at it as a necessity of the Christian life and something that was just going to happen, that you would have to pay something in order to um, receive the benefits of a deep walk with God. So my encouragement today is, is for all of us that we would be willing to go through the growing pains of personal growth through our relationship with Christ, through our meditation and our study, so that the circumstances that are going on around us, regardless of whether they are peaceful and calm, or they are chaotic or absolutely devastating, whatever is happening, we would have the grace to deal with them because we have been strengthened by our deep walk and relationship with Christ. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on here to talk about more devotional stuff and more things about prayer. Um, you just have a great weekend. Be sure to watch my brother's uh, podcast and, um, and get some spiritual vitamins into you. Uh, we love you and God loves you even more. You just have a great week.